This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Man Canadian Barbecue Company. The Man Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Man Canadian will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday from 4 to 7 in Cary, Ohio, for some more barbecue and bingo. Come hungry, bring your bingo stamps, get ready for some barbecue bingo this Thursday, 4 to 7. Be sure to follow the Mad Canadian's social media pages, Twitter and Facebook. Find more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Soupcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee uh, Company is an Ohio-based, Marine-owned, veteran-owned uh, coffee company. Uh, they are a micro roaster. <laughs> they are, Stuart, you're killing me right now. Um, micro roaster based out of Perrysburg, Ohio, which is just outside of Toledo. Integrity is the core value of what they do. Integrity is the core value of what they do all the way from the farmers they buy from because all of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA, USDA organic all the way to you, the consumer, where all of your beans are fresh roasted, fresh ground if you want them ground. Um, and they're taking care of everyone, everyone from beginning to end throughout the entire supply line. Uh, they import their high quality coffee beans from places like Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and more. Um, so holiday season's coming up. You can do $50. Uh, you have uh, free shipping over $50 and gift cards are also available. There's also a subscribe and save service. Lots of amazing options available to you uh, over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, YouTube land? How's it going, everyone in the Sloop Cats here? Hey, Stewart's you know what's great? When you it... choke on your own spit within the first minute of the show. <laughs> Stuart making us laugh early. That his, is one of my favorite gifts there. of all time, Stuart. It, it, it honestly is. It's good. It's good. All right. It is our, um, um, <clears throat> collegiate chaos, our cle collegiate chaos episode here. Okay. Um, chaos took a name here. Could have been took more. Two. Took, took two. Took, took a couple of names here. So, uh, I was hoping a few more here, but let's get into it and talk about them, Jared. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right here, Jared. How are you doing today? I oh uh, no, I, wow. Okay, I don't know why I expected you to say something else there, Kyle. I am not on top of my stuff today, but you know what? We push forward. Um, I'm doing <laughs> fine. Uh, maybe I'm a little tired. Maybe I'm a little tired. I've been up for a while, but uh, yeah, uh, we're all we're all good over here. Uh, we have a collegiate chaos episode to get to here. Um, Right off the bat, Stuart down in our chat asked the questions, uh, are there really four S-tier teams? Well, yes, because there have to be. <laughs> because there have to be, yes. Um, uh, are there four truly deserving of playoff spots at this point? Man, this feels like a season where the BCS would have worked out just fine. Just let Ohio State play Georgia and let's get this over with, right? That That's mm -hmm. sort of what it's feeling like right now. Yep. Uh, but that's not, but I, I don't want the BCS back. So let's, let's, let's not even joke about that. Uh, Kyle, let's, uh, let's get into it. Let's review some of the top games from this weekend. Uh, let's, let's take a look at some top 25 action. Uh, who won, who lost, whose, uh, souls did chaos, chaos claim. Can't talk today, Kyle. You want me to take over, Jerry? Yes, for God's sakes. <laughs> All right. Uh, typically, we we usually start with the um, uh, Big Ten here. So I'll, I'll go ahead and um, hope the Big Ten games here. Any anything in particular here you're wanting to really review? Uh, let's see. Penn State took care of Gamelin. Rutgers. Michigan took care of Maryland easily. They won fifty nine to eighteen. Uh, in Minnesota beat Indiana. So the the other two games here, Iowa. 
in Illinois. Yeah. Uh, Illinois may be starting to look somewhat respectable. Uh, I think Burt's doing a good job there. Um, Iowa, of course, was never like the number two team that they peaked at at one point. Um, that they, they just weren't, they, we, we, and I think we all knew it at the time even, but it was a fun ride for them. So it's somewhere in between those two things, right? Like Iowa is a yeah. somewhat respectable team right now. And, or excuse me, Illinois is a somewhat respectable team right now. And Iowa is where they should be, which is like just inside the top 20. Mm-hmm. And then in Nebraska fashion here, Jared. Yeah. Losing by losing by one score to Wisconsin, 35 to 28. You know, it even benefits Ohio State that, that Wisconsin, not, not that I think it matters, I think no. in the grand scheme of things, but it technically it benefits Ohio State for Wisconsin to win this game and to be as highly ranked as possible heading into the Big Ten ch- and all that crap, right? But man, I felt so bad. I was cheering for Nebraska. I felt bad for Nebraska. Um, man, I, 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 no team, no team as good as Nebraska deserves to be as bad as they are, as bad as their record indicates. Um, they have Kyle, they, they have a, they have a plus in the score differential. Think about that. They've scored more points than they've given up. And they're five games under 500. Yeah. They're They're two and and seven. They're two and seven and have a plus in the point differential. How is that possible? Well, it's possible because they've not lost only one game. Kyle, only one game have they lost. Uh, poor. Uh, they just blew that one plus seventy point differential plus seventy. That's, they. That is just. I I feel terrible. I feel terrible for Nebraska. They're mm-hmm. actually a very good team. They just can't finish games. Uh, it's 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 actually like tragic at this point. Three and eight with a plus seventy point differential. Gangland. Uh has has for uh supplying stats yep. for us down in the chat there it's it's tragic really at this point and like you look mm-hmm. at all the advanced statistics and they they score really well in all the advanced statistics and kyle just to throw some some positivity your way this was like one of the first times in the history of the podcast you've gone outside of the sloop picks to like point out a game that you thought had a bad line that people could take advantage of. You're like, uh, they have Wisconsin losing by more, or excuse me, they have Nebraska losing by more than a score. Nebraska never loses by more than a score. (laughs) Give me that game. Uh, Stuart, no, some guy named Jimmy did that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) The... Yeah, sorry, sorry. Someone, someone else, Stewart, not not named Stewart, went seven and zero in the slew picks this week. Sorry. All right. Um. Yeah. Yeah, I feel bad, just like what Jared said. Nebraska better Such than what their team. score is. They're, they're, yeah, they're better with their than what their record is here. All right. Um. Moving on to the national games here. Uh. Let's we'll start off with uh chaos here. Uh. Clemson. Finally finding their offensive groove here, forty-eight to twenty-seven over Wake Forest. Yeah, that's they're, uh, they're starting to look. They're starting to look better, and they are now in the driver's seat. No, to win their division. No, they are not. Wake Forest still is. Remember, remember at home, everybody. <laughs> Wake Forest's one loss outside of the Clemson game. Was oh, against man. a conference opponent, but was not a conference uh, game. Yes, you're right. Therefore, this is Wake Forest's first loss, first conference loss of the season. Clemson has two conference losses on the season. Therefore, Wake Forest would have to lose, and Clemson would have to win next week you're in order right. for Clemson to win the division. I keep, I keep forgetting that. Yeah, Everyone keeps big... forgetting that. It's confusing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
so this is a big big game for Wake Forest. They they play Boston College, which that's that's not going to be an easy game. Uh, I think Boston College is a is a decent team. Uh, another team that I I think they're better what their record says, but uh, I think early here as we're recording here, Jared Wake Forest is only a five point favorite to Boston College. So they, they <laughs> Clemson may back door <laughs> to get into this. It's possible. It's 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 possible. Uh, Pitt, on the other hand, has sealed up the other side of the ACC. So Pitt will be playing in Charlotte. That's where they play that, Kyle. They play the ACC game in Charlotte. Yes, they do. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Pitt's going to Charlotte, and we'll we'll see between Wake and and Clemson who who gets to represent the and, other side of the ACC. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, it, it's between those two right now. Well, no. So it's interesting. I I don't know how this is going to work. So it looks like NC State's played one less conference game. But, um, but they only have two losses. So you have Wake Forest six and one in conference. That is Clemson six and two, NC State five and two. So doesn't that technically give like Clemson that that advantage because they have one more victory? Or how does that work? Because NC State has the tiebreaker over Clemson. Well, it's because it's because Clemson doesn't. Uh, Clemson plays South Carolina this week. So Clemson's done with That's their conference right. schedule. That's yeah. right. Yes. So, yeah, they, so they do the in-state rival thing. So uh, Clemson's done with their conference schedule. So so crazy chaos if Wake Forest loses. Yeah. I don't know how the tiebreaker is going to work because they each lost to each other. Um. Oh, as far as NC State getting back in? Yeah. NC, oh. So NC State lost to Wake Forest. Wake Forest. I forgot about NC uh, lost State. Lost to Clemson. Clemson lost to NC State. It's, yeah. You know what? I don't care. Moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Wait. Um, now, before we get any further, you 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 brought up Wake Forest, which means Kyle, it is it is oh, time. Yes. It is time to bring out the tears. Um. Yep. I gotta pull you up here, Jared. All right, there we here go. we go. All right, where's Rick Forrest? There they are. They're in the B tier. All right, fellas. Wake Forest out. Um, I mean, this is their second loss. I'm okay moving them to C. Okay, that's fine. All right. I'm good with that then. All right, since since we have this open here, Jared. Michigan State move them down to C as well. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we talked about Michigan State during the Monday episode. So, yeah, um, Michigan State gets their second loss. They go down to C. Yeah. All right. All right. We're, we're going to be moving some others here. All right. Uh, next game here, Jared. O- Oklahoma beating Iowa State 28 to 21 after getting, after stopping Iowa State inside the five to se- to seal the win there. Could have, could have gone to overtime here, but here's another close victory for Oklahoma winning games, but just not not convincingly, though. Yeah, which is which is going to hurt them, um, mm-hmm. which I think is why Kyle and I will continue, I believe. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. We have to drop Oregon still. We haven't got to that game. Um, mm-hmm. I, I guess it's, it's a one-loss Oklahoma team. I, I guess you keep them at A. For now, I I don't think they're an A team, but based on how we have our ratings, they I, I can't drop them to a B. Well, right I now. was talking. Well, so I mean, I was talking about like we have to replace. I think we have to replace. In my opinion, we have to replace Oregon. Okay, and well, you're just you you took that the opposite way. <laughs> so I'm gonna <laughs> go right. ahead and assume you don't want to replace them with Oklahoma. We have to replace well, let, Oregon. Let's, let, 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 okay, let's let's let's, let's talk move about forward. the Oregon game here. So Oregon just lays Shellacked. and just yeah lays an egg there. 
38 to 7 over the Utes. Over the Utes. The original U. Yes, the uh, original 38, U. 38 to 7. So now, Jared, Oregon, two losses now. Do two losses drink? and a shellacking. Like, do we drop them all the way to B tier then? I, I think so, because as Ohio State learned in back to back years after getting shellacked by Purdue, getting shellacked by Iowa, the, the committee takes that seriously. Mm-hmm. Like losing yeah. big is something the committee, I believe. So you, now you're two losses and you got shellacked. Quite frankly, they should actually probably move all the way down to C. Let's keep them at B right now. Okay. Uh, we can we can re-review this, but let's keep them at B right now. That's fair. Uh, so let's talk about the rest of the S tiers here. Georgia played nobody. They stay where they they stay where they're at. And their game Ohio paralleled Ohio State's game against Michigan State. Everyone was keeping yep. score yep. between Ohio <laughs> State and Georgia. Yeah. Cincinnati, and by the way, Ohio State was playing a top ten team, and Georgia was playing an FCS team. For the record. Cincinnati took care of business over SMU, and Alabama beats Arkansas or Arkansas forty-two to thirty-five. Not not a great showing against a team that is generously ranked in the top twenty-five. They're, you know, a, a, what are they? Twenty-first or twenty-second? Twenty-first. Oh, won't um, be anymore. Right, uh, but coming into the week, twenty-first. Uh, not a great Alabama showing. Uh, their their defensive backs, their corners are vulnerable. Their passing defense is incredibly vulnerable. Uh, their offense is is obviously filled with a bunch of talented guys. That that goes without saying. But I don't think that they're as polished as Ohio State on offense. I think that's a given. And defensively, like I said, just vulnerable I, Ohio state guys. I'm just going to say it. I'm dancing around saying it. I'm going to say it. Everyone look at me. Ohio state would destroy absolutely humiliate Alabama right now. Ohio state. I'm going to break my microphone. This is how passionate I am about it. <laughs> Ohio state would demolish Alabama right now. All right. As Jared's fixing this here. So I'm just going to say Georgia won. Ohio State, two. And you know what? I'm going to put Cincinnati at three. Put Cincinnati at three, and then Alabama at four, right now. You know what? Let's 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 just hold off. Let's get let let's talk about the rest of our games, okay. and, and we'll come back around to that. But before we do that, Kyle, let's take an ad break. We'll come back. We'll talk about uh, Michigan, uh, Oklahoma State, Notre Dame, and a few other big games from this weekend. Okay, sounds good. All right. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, as I mentioned at the start of the show, OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday, 4 to 7. Be there. Good barbecue. Good time for some bingo. Uh, Let me read some more uh, reviews left by actual customers who's had some of that delicious barbecue from the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, Here's one that said, heard heard about this um, company from a friend's post. You could be the next one hearing it from this podcast. Um, this is some of the best pulled pork sandwich I've ever had. Um, we'll definitely come again and such friendly people. And here's another saying that they picked up some brisket and pulled pork meals. All, all, of, all of them enjoyed it, truly enjoyed it both. Ordered both kinds of sauce on the side. And we could try their homemade curry floodwater sauce. And after one taste... We didn't even open the Sweet Baby Ray's container. Their sauce is fantastic. Uh, great reviews. Check them out on Facebook, Twitter. Great guy. Great food. Again, this Thursday in Cary, OLC Shrine Cafeteria, 4 to 7 for some barbecue and bingo. Uh, be sure to hit up his social media for more information about him and his food truck, and we'll help be heading to next. Madikane Barbecue Company for the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. I told you who they were in the first ad read. Let's take a look at a coffee or two. Let's talk about the Rocco. Uh, the Rocco is an Ethiopian natural process medium roast. However, 
It is also available in a dark roast. Uh, this is a unique coffee in the Iron Bean brand as it is available in your choice of roast and also your choice of bean, either whole ground, whole ground, whole or ground, uh, whole bean or ground. Um, they call this the mother of all coffee. It's an Ethiopian single origin uh, coffee. It is the birthplace of coffee as we know it. He says there's something pretty special and unique about an Ethiopian natural. When it's at its best, uh, they are excited to supply such a coffee. Who should drink this? Those who enjoy coffees that insist on being noticed. Um, notes of tropical fruit, blueberry, watermelon, jasmine uh, has a rich acidity and silky math- mouthfeel. Uh, this coffee is pleasing and exotic. Uh, another coffee to take a look at real quick will be the cast iron. Uh, the cast iron is another medium roast, uh, as always available whole green, whole bean or ground. Um, it is this one, this coffee in particular is veteran owned from farm to cup, um, originally roasted by hand in a cast iron skillet. That is where it gets its name. Um, it's extremely versatile, with a smooth, rich, clean flavor. Um, let's see, where, where are the notes? Um, I can't find the notes on this one. That's okay. It's delicious. It's one of my favorite coffees. Uh, and by the way, it's uh, I think it's one of the Mad Canadian's favorite coffees as well. Just going to throw that one out there too. Uh, so you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, Kyle, we have a few more games to get well, to. Well, one other thing real quick here, Jared. Uh, yeah. This is actually kind of interesting that uh, Gangland brought up here. Iowa and Nebraska for next week's game. Iowa's 9-2, and two, Nebraska's 3-8. and eight. Nebraska's favored. Oh, yeah. Go Huskers. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. All right, back to the games here. Uh, let's see, where do we leave off? All right, Notre Dame... Now here, here's 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 an interesting one. I think we'll spend some time here. Notre Dame beats Georgia Tech handily, fifty-five nothing. So this is pretty much like what Ohio State did to Michigan State. Notre Dame here, one loss in all of their games. Yeah. I'm going to pull up all their 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 games real quick here, but all of their games, they've looked pretty good. They've looked pretty good in their games here. Should we really start considering that Notre Dame possibly can backdoor getting into the playoffs here with all of these teams getting knocked out, ACC out, Pac-12 out, the Big 12 possibly, depending on how these next two weeks happen, probably out, most likely out too. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk, we'll get there, we'll get there. But but Notre but Notre Dame here. I, I think I think right now, even though the B tier is getting scarce, I'm I'm almost tempted to put Notre Dame in the A tier. Maybe 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 we can swap Notre Dame and Oklahoma here. Oklahoma go into the B tier and put Notre Dame in the A tier here. Well, I think one of those teams in the A tier gets moved up to the S tier, therefore that will leave a spot open in the A tier. Okay. Well, so I, we I think to... after, I think from what we've seen with Notre Dame here, um, sadly, hand, just they're beating all the teams. That, and, and they beat Wisconsin. Let's not forget earlier in the year, granted, earlier in the year, they demolished Wisconsin 41 to 13. Their only loss is to a currently a top five team in Cincinnati here. I, I think you got. I think Notre Dame. You move up to the A tier here. They're 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 peaking at the right time right now. Kyle, dare I say it? We need first off. Yes, let's move them up to the A tier. I think that's absolutely necessary. Notre Dame needs chaos because they can't be a conference champion, right? Correct. Uh, Stewart says I don't like dropping Michigan State to the C tier. That. May- Stuart, all of the two lost teams, except for Oregon at this point, who we still might drop down to C tier or maybe just redefine something. 
all of the two lost teams are C tier or worse. <laughs> Gangland goes, I think Ohio State dropped them there. Yeah, that's fair. Um yes. don't don't blame us for that one. Uh the <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna move Notre Dame up. Kyle, let's can we can we take a look at Notre Dame though? Um mm -hmm. what's yeah. what do you want to know about Notre Dame? Let's take a look at their schedule. Who yeah. would you say so, is their best win? Uh Wisconsin, easily. Wisconsin. So they beat Florida State. Florida State's nobody. They had a weak game against Toledo. Granted, this was all the way back at the second week of the. Okay. They beat. They beat Purdue. Yeah, they it's... beat. Per they beat Purdue by fourteen points. Um, mm -hmm. they beat Wisconsin. Wisconsin was struggling hard at that time. We should they point out they did not have an offense yet at that point. They lost to Cincinnati. Um, they had a close win against Virginia Tech. They had a, an okay win against a USC team that's not at all impressive. They had a 10-point win over a North Carolina team that seems to be very hot and cold this season, To I think is a fair assessment of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, they, But then, to your point, they... they made easy work of Navy. They made easy work of Virginia. They made easy work of Georgia tech. None of those teams are real world beaters. I think they're really, I think to your point, I think they're lacking a big win. I think they're they lacking are, I mean, a big win. And, and, and it is Wisconsin granite. Yes. Early in the year, Wisconsin was terrible early in their year, but on paper, it's going to look like a, it's going to look like a solid win in their resume. So I, I think I think A is the best that they can do unless they can backdoor getting into the playoffs. So I think having Notre Dame there in A, I think is reasonable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 from I'm Kyle, I'm moving the conversation to talk about we have an empty empty spot in S tier. I that's what I'm focused on right now. Okay. Right, I, I cannot let's... envision placing them in S tier right now due to a lack of a quality win. All right. Let, let's finish the B let's finish the A tier teams then. So Alabama, I think we Yeah, Alabama, we already talked about barely barely beating um Arkansas forty two to thirty five. Um Oklahoma barely beat Iowa State twenty eight to twenty one. Oklahoma State did what they need to against Texas Tech, twenty-three to nothing, and then Michigan. Texas took Tech, care of by the way, is not against a Maryland, fifty-nine team. to eighteen. So, you could, you could argue. I mean, I mean, based on the resumes here, it, it, it's tough because I think. Say it. Alabama definitely. Alabama definitely has the better resume. So I, I think it's. It, I think putting into that fourth spot, it's between Alabama and Michigan right now. I think Alabama has a better resume, but I think Michigan has looked better than Alabama when you when you're comparing the teams. But Michigan has so. I mean, Michigan's beat Wisconsin, yes, who we've already deemed yep. as Notre Dame's best win. Mm -hmm. They've beaten Michigan. No, excuse me, they lost to Michigan State. But that's they did. If, we're, if we're counting quality losses, like they they lost to Michigan State. Uh, they beat a Penn State team, who you and I both agree is better than their record indicates. Mm -hmm. um, same, I believe they had. Did they have a win over Nebraska as well, Michigan? Um, yeah, they do. Yep, three point victory. Yeah. And and as of late, this has not been true all season, but as of late, Michigan has been winning the games in fashion that you would expect a playoff team to win the games in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. But kind of like what you were saying with Notre Dame, what's their best victory? What is Michigan's best, best victory here? I guess, again, probably Wisconsin. Maybe Penn State. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's totally fair. I mean it probably is Wisconsin. I would say 
the difference between the big difference right now between Michigan and Notre Dame is Michigan's winning games in more impressive fas- fashions. And Michigan has Ohio State on the schedule. Michigan can still yeah. win a conference. Like they still can, yeah. Michigan has a lot of potential left in their schedule, whereas Notre Dame feels tapped out. I feel like Notre Dame is who Notre Dame is. Yeah. Like what what does Notre Dame have left? They play Stanford. Congratulations. Yeah. Like a win over Stanford so, isn't gonna move the meter here. Yeah. So so the question then here is who's who is going to be up there in that fourth that fourth S tier? Uh, so I I like Michigan's resume better than I like Notre Dame's. Um I think Oklahoma, if if you if we had to pick between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State, I would pick Oklahoma State. I think that they're winning games more impressively right now. Kyle, we face a scenario, by the way, with within the Big 12 that I think we need to talk a little bit about here. And I worked this out during the social screen. So gangland, help me out here if I've if I miss some details or whoever was in the social screen last night. Help me out here if I miss some details. We we figured out what the Big Twelve scenario was. Okay. Because it's complicated. Because Oklahoma lost to Baylor, but Oklahoma mm-hmm. State beat Baylor. And okay. we're looking potentially at a three way tie atop hmm. the Big Twelve. Nope. No, it won't it Did won't I say that? because no, it won't because Oklahoma and Oklahoma State have each have one conference loss. Baylor has two losses. This weekend is Oklahoma and Oklahoma State winner. Oh, I see for the second yeah, spot. Yes. The second spot. Yes. There, now you there you go. There it is. Okay. Yeah. That, that is the question there. So if I'm trying to remember how this played out. If Oklahoma State wins. God, how did this work? We figured it out during the social screen. If but bottom line here is that we could have Oklahoma and Oklahoma State play each other in back to back weeks. Uh, you would need Oklahoma to win the game. Yeah, if Oklahoma wins this week, then Oklahoma and Oklahoma State will play back to back. It said it's. It said it's a <clears throat> excuse me. It's score differential. Well, but you would go to win ver. You would go win versus win first, right? Because and if you go if you go win versus win, it ah, uh, yeah. If Oklahoma wins, they're the lone single loss team in conference, and then Oklahoma State beat Baylor. Therefore, Oklahoma State gets the tiebreaker over Baylor. And Oklahoma State and Oklahoma would play twice in a row. But if Oklahoma State beats Oklahoma, then Oklahoma State's the number one team, and the tie between one and two, or between two and three, would then go to Baylor because Baylor beat Oklahoma. Yeah, so. Yeah. And if I accidentally yeah. said Oklahoma, where I should have said Oklahoma State somewhere in that rant, forgive me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> definitely confusing. Definitely confusing there. Um, but Jared, we still haven't picked our fourth team here. Well, that's kind of what I'm talking about here. Because you have two teams who simultaneously like, kind of control their own I, destiny I, I, to win the conference. And honestly, honestly, too, like, I don't think either of them are should be in that fourth spot. I still think right now, in my mind, it should be Alabama in that fourth spot. And then the rest will take care of itself in a couple of weeks, too. So I think for after week 12. Stuart now, just says not, no one gonna, deserves it. And he's right. But, yes, but we got to put a fourth one there. So I think based on resume, it's no one has it better with the rest of the A tier than Alabama. It's it's Alabama in that fourth spot. There's If, if you don't put them there, Jared, you're you're doing a dishonor, honestly. You know, I was just trying to make it a bit interesting by introducing some other I know, teams I into know, the conversation. But it, it is what it is here. 
All right. And by the way, right, it, it could on. have been it could have been Michigan. It could have been Michigan. But Bama has a much, much better resume than Al than um Michigan right now. All right, moving on. We got we gotta move on here. So Pittsburgh defeats Virginia forty eight to thirty eight. It was a really close game here. I still don't trust Pitt. I'd keep them at the C tier there. They they are our two loss, so they stay where they're at. Um University of Texas San Antonio pulls out a squeaker win, still undefeated here. Jared, do we move on to B tier? Sure. Why not? <laughs> you know right. what? And but, sorry, or- Oregon, you're a two loss team. I you went all the way from S tier to C tier, which feels harsh, but like you're a two loss team, oh, and that's oh, where two oh. loss teams go. Sorry. Oh, ouch. All right. Uh anybody on B tier? Well, I mean, Coastal that's why Carolina? I was real that's why I was Co- real uh willing Coastal to Carolina? move UTSA up there. Coastal Carolina? Uh mm-mm. no. Yeah. All right. Baylor uh beats Kansas State twenty to ten in probably one of the boringest games you'll watch. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. Twenty to ten in a ugh game. Ugh. Um, uh, we're all out of B tier teams. We we are like I'm I'm looking through here, so I know you got your mouse over Ole Miss. I don't see no. Ole Miss moving up. That at that all. was a total accident. And by the way, like UTSA, not really. Like not really. They struggled to beat Houston this week. They have one loss, but they have one loss. Like sorry, you're no, it's not happening for you. Um. No, the B tier, I think, is I don't think we have a B tier anymore. And I think that's okay. Well, I think it's just okay we don't have a B tier anymore. What about what about one loss San Diego State? No. (laughs) No. I'm just gonna say no. Sorry, I'm just you, you have to you have to be exceptional. If you're if you're not in a power five, you have to be exceptional. And like if you if you really want to, Kyle, I can grab San Diego State here and I can put them in the C tier. And, and why don't you grab Houston too? They're they're a one they're a one loss. Sure. Team as well. I mean we can keep tossing teams. Uh yeah, I'm I i do not feel like trying to find Houston down in this mess down here. It's we can keep tossing H. teams into the C tier, but who cares? I'm not putting I'm not putting anyone else in the B tier. Um Okay. Screw Houston, whatever. I don't care. If I if I was able to find that big red H quicker down in that mess, I might do it, but I can't, so I'm not. All right. All right, Jared. All right, so this is our weird week 12 <laughs> rankings here. Um, I definitely think teams will move up and down here next week. It, it is rivalry week, so we're going to have a lot of a lot of crazy games here. By the way, I anticipate. Let, let's take a quick look at this. Let's take a quick look at this, right? By the way, I'm going to, I just feel like doing this. I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swap. A, a, you know what? Com- you did it. You, yeah, but we're doing it now. I changed the rules. I, I, I reserve that right. So we have Georgia one, Ohio State two, Cincinnati three, Alabama four. Michigan five, Oklahoma State at six, Oklahoma Honestly, at seven, Notre Dame at eight. Okay, if you're going to do this, Jared, yeah, mine, I wish I did. you move, you move Notre Dame all the way past the Oklahomas. And they go behind Michigan. I uh, uh, what do you think down there in the chat? I think Notre Dame goes ahead. Notre Dame of the first Oklahomas. or Oklahoma's first. Whoever gets the answer in first. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, God. Exactly. They're, they're as divided as we are, Kyle. Are you still there, Matt? You get the deciding uh, vote. Are you still there, Matt? You get the deciding vote. All right. We'll, we'll wait for Matt. While well, we're waiting for Matt here, Jared, let's, um, let's get the, um, let's get some, uh, let's get some Sloopcast questions here since we are. All right. Over on time here, as usual. Kabuto, should the CFP committee and also the AP limit their rankings to 15 teams? The answer is no. 
the AP should wait until like mid October before they even do anything. I I mean I agree with that, but then that would reduce their relevance. Mm-hmm. So they're not going to do it. And like they're yeah. they're really hanging on to what little relevance they have left. Yeah, I I don't think they should limit to 15 teams. It's just I like the CFP waiting until November and the AP they can just Are we talking about whatever. what they will do or what they should do? Cuz if we're talking about what they should do, they should dissolve themselves cuz they don't matter anymore. Yep. All right, Nomad, is it okay to throw up in your mouth just a little every time you see a T-Ton jersey? Yes. A little bit. Yes. A little bit. He also asks, why does T-Ton suck so much? Um, Arrogance and an unwillingness to change. Thinking you're better than everyone else and thinking you can't learn lessons from people who you deem lesser than you. Then you have a coach writing convertible saying who's got it better than us. I mean, exactly. Like, it's that lack of awareness. Who's got it better than us when you're literally a floundering program? Yeah. Uh, does Jimmy Harb survive on hot dogs and milk alone? Yes. I feel like there's probably something else in there, and I don't know why. Doesn't he say I want to say, say it's about beef jerky. Chicken? No, he, he doesn't about... like chicken. Yes. Because it's a nervous it, yes. bird. He won't eat chicken because it's a nervous bird. Um, I want to feel like, and I don't know this, but I feel like he eats a lot of beef jerky. I could see that. Yeah. All right. Who's your Buckeye Zach? And I say that mostly because it's a meat that would actually like of all of the meats. If you're going to put any meat in your pocket, like we know he likes to do with hot dogs. Ha, I don't think you can, I don't think you can gangland. I don't know if you can make hot dog into beef jerky. I don't. I think it's mostly water as is. Yeah. All right. All right. Who's your Buckeye Zach asks us? I heard multiple references by Herbie and Fowler pertaining towards Sparty having a terrible pass defense. Yet Georgia's offense finally showed up against an FCS four and five powerhouse Charleston Southern. Does this prelude toward continued lazy observation and bias of ESPN? Or do these idiots actually believe Charleston Southern is better than number seven team in the nation? I don't think they ever said that. I think I think that's a bit of a reach by you, if I'm being honest with you. By the way, I found Houston and I put them in the thing for you. All right. Good job. All right. And he says, one last question. Why can't ESPN reveal, reveal through the wool that Georgia may possibly get railroaded by the Buckeyes if they meet? They won't until it happens, if it happens. Yeah. It's fine. Like, and by the way, like, I don't, George is the one team who I don't love as a matchup for Ohio State. George is the one team that I do not love as a matchup for Ohio State. And I say that Mm -hmm. because when Ohio State's offense has struggled this year, they've struggled due to big, dominant defensive tackles. Yep, exactly. They've handled... They've handled some really good defensive ends this year. They've been able to scheme around really good linebackers and defensive backs. They've done a really good job isolating, targeting, scheming around all sorts of good defensive players this year. Where they have struggled are these Mm -hmm. big defensive tackles, and Georgia's got two of them. So that's my one concern from a matchup standpoint for Ohio State is Georgia. Yeah. Um, what's Georgia's biggest win? Uh, ask um, Gangland. Stewart says Clemson. Uh, no, actually, I don't count Clemson I, as a big win. Clemson's not actually, very good. Actually, that brings up a good question. Yeah. Arkansas, Auburn, Kentucky, Kentucky, Florida. Yeah, they don't have a great win. But they look dominant, though. Exactly. They've looked dominant. In their in their wins against teams that aren't necessarily great, like was Kentucky good? No, but did they look completely dominant? And that and that's the difference too is that yeah they haven't had the greatest. I mean, now that the season's unfolding right now, the schedule hasn't looked the greatest. But you're the most points you let up in one game is seventeen. That's that's saying yeah. a lot right there. Agreed, especially when you're 
in situations in which the other team goes down big early and starts passing the ball. And yeah. Um, again, Georgia, I don't believe has been fully tested this year, but they do what you're supposed to do against a lesser schedule. And yes, I am suggesting that an sec team has played a lesser schedule. Fucking sue me. An SEC team, yes, I mean, has I mean, played a lesser schedule I mean, this year. I mean, Florida, they have Florida not been just, tested. Just, I mean, Florida but, just let let go of their coach. Yes, Dan Mullen fired, but they've yeah. done what you're supposed to do against a lesser schedule, which is look dominant. Yeah, and a compared schedule like Georgia versus Arkansas, thirty-seven nothing. And what was this score for Alabama and Arkansas? Forty-two thirty-five. Right there. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to Georgia versus Bama. Yeah. Because it's right. it's one Quit. of the first times in God, I can't even tell you, Kyle, where I am expecting Alabama to lose a football game. When was mm-hmm. the last time? This is for all the listeners. This ben. is for Kyle. This is people in the chat, YouTube comments, people in the Discord listening to this after the fact. When was the last time you expected? Expected. Alabama to lose a game. It's yeah, it's been it's been a long time. I, All right, um looking looking at the games here, Jared. Man, we got we got an SC SEC matchup this Thursday. We got a lot of games Friday and then a lot and a lot of great games uh this Saturday too. So it's going to be fun. Um, the Iowa Nebraska game is Friday afternoon at 1:30. Uh, of course, the Ohio State Michigan game, the game noon, uh, which both uh, Big Ten or Big Ten, the Big Noon kickoff and game day will be up in Ann Arbor. Uh, got the what are what other games here? The Alabama Auburn game. Uh, I think Penn State Michigan State will be a really good game too. There's a lot, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State we mentioned earlier going to be a great game too. A lot of great games as we head into um, rival rivalry weekend. I am not going to attempt to say that. I, I can't say the phrase that Kyle just said. I can't do it. Rivalry week. <laughs> I hey, feel I, like I have marbles in my mouth every time I try. All right, that's all I got, Jared. Today, uh, be sure to be sure to um, catch our next episode Thursday as we review the game. And then Friday, never we has will, we, never has know your enemy been a more appropriate title than it will be this Thursday. Yes. And then this Friday will be all the other games. So be sure to tune back for Thursday and Friday's episode. Yeah. Uh, and be sure to join our discord for hate week. We've uh, X'd out all of the M's and all of the channel names in our discord server. So uh, come check that out. I mean, yeah. Come on guys. If you've never joined the discord server, now's the time to do it. We have X's. We have X's, you guys. So, yeah, come come join our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, now would be a good time to support us financially as we look to what our, our schedule looks like in the December part of the season. Um, you know, because I don't we're, we're not going to be keeping up the five episodes a week, but we'd like to in some respects or like to keep doing it frequently. But, you know, we. We really need some financial support to achieve that. So uh, any assistance from anyone who could help us out there via Patreon, patreon patreon.thesloopcast.com, you can get access to all of the digital content you desire from us for $3 a month. That's it. And if you're like, I hate paying monthly, well, you can pay for the entire year up front. And it's like you you get a discount for doing so. So it ends up being like, like $32 a month, something like that. So come, come help us out. Come, come join up, uh, and hang out in the discord with all of these, uh, hooligans, all of these hyenas, uh, you know, with basketball season, we still, we got basketball season. It's time to come hang out with us. So, uh, come hang out, out with us. Discord.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Man, I was looking, uh, <laughs> as we're recording here this Sunday night here, not 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 really much. It's just a lot of anticipation for signed calendar. The game Sorry. that's coming up here 
it's gonna got you Stuart. it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun i i don't really have anything here just just getting getting pumped getting ready for the game that's here in in a few days yeah uh yeah it's <laughs> just like whoo i'm looking forward to it i'm, re I'm real excited um Mm -hmm. We had Kyle. And I, I, and when I'm was the last time entertain. Ohio State and Michigan had this much of a? Because like didn't play last year, and it's just like it feels like forever since we've got to do this, and it, I'm so looking forward to it. And when's the last time these two teams have been this highly ranked? Probably since '06. Um, a revenge tour. Yeah, you're probably right. 2016 what 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 was the ranking for that it, it, i mean obviously one versus two can never be topped but um and we don't necessarily know what the cfp rankings are yet for for this game but we can probably take a pretty decent guess that it'll be what three versus five ish So 2016, yeah. Well, no, 2016 season, Ohio State was 6th, Michigan was 10th. Uh, oh, was that, was that the... Yeah, I think that you're was, using oh, no, the end right, of no, the no, year no, no, rankings. Right, yeah, no, Game Land right. is saying that at right. the time yes. of the game, it was 3 versus 2. You are right, yep. It's okay, I... Uh, I was going to say 2006, but no, you're right. The 2016, two versus three. No, that will be slightly it, higher ranked than this game. It's, it's, it's pretty slight because I still, I, I would, what or is, you know, I college football I rankings. Yeah. I anticipate Ohio state to be move up to number two. You, you're expecting the Bama jump. I expect it. If not, that's it. Listen, it should happen, but will it happen? I think I think Ohio State's earned it with I, yeah, a huge, they, they really, with an really enormous they, win they really over the should. seventh best team in the country. Yeah, they they really should. Yep they they should be two, and then Michigan should be should be fifth there. I that agree has, with has you that it should it. happen. I'm just very skeptical that it will. I'm expecting three versus five. You know who cares if if they don't if they don't do how we rank them they're wrong. Yeah. Screw you, playoff committee. <laughs> All right, that's it, Jared. Let's go ahead and end today. Since at three, let's go. Do it, you cowards. You won't. <laughs> All right, that's it. Um, <laughs> I got Kyle with that one. I don't know why I got Kyle with that one. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the episode. Uh, that was a great Kyle's corner. Uh, come join us in the discord server. All of that. I already said it. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by Kyle. It's, it's hate week. It's hate week. So we got to pull out the big guns. This is by a former Ohio state football player, Evan Blankenship. Yeah, that's right. Um, he leads the Columbus based country band, um, uh, North to Nashville. So yeah, we got we got to pull out the big guns. Uh, we're pulling out an actual Buckeye football player. Uh, once again, his he is Evan Blankenship. The name of the band is uh, North to Nashville. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is North to Nashville, featuring Evan Blankenship. Mm -hmm.